Thank you very much for joining me for another drawing session. This one has to do with nature journaling and field sketching techniques. Uh, the illustration I have here is one of many drawings I've created over the past 20 years with students at Goodwillie Environmental School, uh, sharing and exploring different aspects of nature, things that we find in the world around us and uh, or in books. And uh, so all of these drawings are arranged kind of like cards on a, on, a, on a table. And we start out with the format that fits the image we're drawing, like in this case, the tall vertical format for the hairy woodpecker. And we begin building it and we'll draw it a shape at a time, just a, a simple ellipse shape here, egg shape. And, and we look at axis lines going this way and that and notice how the tail pushes against the tree and, uh, and, then, um, and then begin adding the details afterwards. I usually use a pencil, sometimes a number two, usually nowadays a number six, uh, 6B, and it works well and shows up, uh, shows up on the projector. Uh, and uh, I add more and more detail as we go. So we start out with the basic lines. Let's say on this bullfrog, we just start out with this, uh, again, kind of a peanut shape, and we add the tail to it, and notice where the legs attach and where the eye is. And, and then we use our shading techniques to show the roundness and fullness of the object. Same thing with this uh, beaver down here. On each of these cards, I have uh, a reference number here to the uh, page where we can find it, the book and the page. I have the date here. I always put the date on it to remember that encounter. And, uh, and I put the name on it. I like to mess around and explore different ways of lettering on each of these. I'll show you some more in a moment. But uh, again, you see the, the data here uh, that, that will identify these creatures. And sometimes you'll see a 1x or a 3x here uh, indicating wh what percentage or size this is in relation to the original object. Uh, my, many of the drawings we do are of objects that are gathered in nature. Students will go out and um, during their breaks and bring back uh, handfuls of leaves and acorns and berries and such and and we'll just we'll explore the different ways these leaves are decaying in the fall. Uh, in the springtime we look at things as they're beginning to grow. First occurrences of, uh, of plants pushing up through the leaves and and um, we document those as well, again, adding the, um, adding the data, the information on them. And we find uh, reference books that allow us to use the taxonomic name down here to put that in. And we use field notes here to indicate the colors and, the, uh, and basically the structure and the colors. Uh, again, here's a cicada. And this here started out with very simple shapes as well, two, two ellipses here and a kind of a rounded rectangle shape, two bulgy eyes, and, uh, and then the details are just filled up one little section at a time uh, until we end up with something that looks quite believable, but uh, they all start out the same basic way. Sometimes I use a Sharpie pen, and you'll see the contrast here is pronounced. When I use a Sharpie pen, I don't start out with a pencil drawing. I just kind of figure out what I'm going to do and notice the structure of the plant and, and I'll break it into the various facets, starting with the stem and then the veins, break those out. And then I notice how the uh, edges of the plant, uh, the edges of the leaf coincide with the veins. And then we map out different changes and indicate, uh, again, this is false, we have color changes. So we use uh, color keys like maroon and deep green. And, and again, by uh, linking that to the date, we can be relatively assured that sometime this year on that particular date, we'll probably go out and find leaves like this that are similar to that. And, and once we have these, uh, this information, we can go back and look it up in reference books. All of these go into what we call a phonology sketchbook. And, uh, and uh, this is a book in which the students will be able to document their discoveries throughout the school year. And in this case here, it gave me a chance to illustrate a drawing showing foreground, middle ground, and background. And, uh, and uh, again, adding color to it makes it a lot more fun. Uh, I, I like both ways. I love working with uh, Sharpie pens. It forces me to be fairly sure what I'm doing before I lay a mark to the line. Students are always uh, are using pencils along with me, but these stand out boldly. And I find out that I can add color to them and it, it really pops them out, brings them to life. Again, you see, even even here, we can do microscopic details, uh, take the seeds from these uh, these stems and, and zoom in on them, or the berry down here. Uh, it gives us a chance to look at it through a, a kind of a magnus, magnified uh, view. And, and also it gives us a chance to show the decay of the leaves in a more believable way. 
Um, I love drawing birds, and uh, very often I start out with uh, start out with very simple shapes. Well, I always start out with simple shapes, and once I have them pretty much the way I like them, um, I start adding shading and toning to them. These started out with very light pencil work, and I arranged everything pretty much where I wanted it. And in time, I'll be adding shading and texture to them to make them look more real and believable as these birds are becoming. Today, we're going to do a drawing that is going to take us out in nature. We'll be exploring the different structures of trees, two different kinds of trees. We've got the deciduous trees and we've got the conifers. And um, we'll be setting them in an environment that allows us to show foreground, middle ground and background. It allows us to show color and texture. Uh, well, you'll add color, but uh, shading and texture. And um, I'm going to start that right now. Clear this off, and, and here we go. I'd like to do this uh, this drawing in the, similar to the others. I'm going to start out with a little card shape, maybe uh, start up here in this corner. And I'm going to draw with pencil this time, and I'm going to make a, a shape. I'll draw this kind of dark here, and I'll come across here and then down. And I'm not measuring everything perfectly, and I'm not worried about it being identical in squares. I want it to look old and tattered, maybe like a page in a journal or a sketchbook that's been used for a long time. It's a little dog-eared and worn, like um, most geologists and botanist journals, if they've been stuffed in, stuffed in field bags and carried in canoes and such. Uh, so I have one space there, and uh, I think I'll add another one, but to make this look more interesting, I'm going to add a line that drops down a little bit, and I'll bring this one out a little further and maybe drop it down a little more over here like this and up so it looks like it's layered beneath the first one. This gives me a kind of an irregular space around the rest of this that I can develop other things with. <clears throat> first tree I want to look at is, um, is this um, the, the um, deciduous tree, and I'm going to start out with a line just to give the basic structure. I'm going to come up with a trunk, and, and when I draw these trees, I, I like to leave broken spaces on them, draw the trunk like this, and these broken spaces give us a chance to uh, draw branches reaching out from that center trunk like this, and each of these can also have breaks in them. And this is the way I would do it as if I was uh, sitting out in front of a tree and, and looking at it. I'd be looking at the way these, the way these branches move and, and uh, intertwine and, and, um, and then using this basic format to kind of place them where they belong. I can come back in and add other details later. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm taking these breaks that I left in the branches and, and forking these smaller branches out further into, into the air to gather the sun's light and the nutrients that they need for processing the chlorophyll and all that helps them grow. So I used a bunch of lines just kind of radiating out. Now from here you have this intricate web of ever smaller branches coming down to the twigs that the leaves attach to and you can put these all over in here like this. Interesting thing about drawing trees is that they all twist and turn, branches twist and turn in different ways. And, um, and it's fun to watch how the shadow and the light plays on them as well. So each one of these makes this tree fill out into a shape that looks more rounded. And uh, it's going to be soon filled with leaves. To, uh, to add a little shading to it, I'm just going to use the side of my pencil here. I'm going to imagine the sun coming from the right-hand side. And as I draw this, I'll leave a little bit of light along the left-hand edge of the trunk, a little edge lighting there. And I come over here and do the same thing on these smaller branches, just enough to make it look more real, more round. And then I'll use a middle tone in the center of the tree here, lightening it up just a bit. 
Now, this could be very smooth like a beech tree or maybe maybe it's an oak. Maybe you want to have a, a texture to it. I'll use a sharper part of my pencil here and just add some marks indicating the bark of the tree. Now that's something that we can look at more closely in another, another little line down here. In fact, I'll do that right now, I'm kind of jumping ahead here. I'm gonna put another card down here to give us a chance to explore details that we can't see in this distant drawing. So I just put that right in that one. Um, I'm going to start out with some grasses growing around here at the base of the tree, uh, maybe at the edge of a field going off into the distance. I have that right in here. And um, up in this area here, I think I'll just start drawing shapes that look kind of like the borderline of the foliage. I'm just gonna kind of lightly ghost this in. It's not, uh, not exactly where things are, but it gives us an idea how we can fit it in. Now, the next thing is to start with the leaves themselves. And uh, from this distance, we're not going to be able to see the intricate details of the leaves, but, but we can suggest it by using lines like this. Just, um, just kind of sketch them in. And uh, you can scribble them like this, or you can draw them a little more detailed, however you want to fill it in. But just think of the leaves radiating out from all of the small stems, the twigs, all reaching out and up. And then you can add this area back in here, kind of shaded or toned to suggest, to suggest leaves further back, just to indicate that the foliage continues. And another way is to do it just like this, just like a little shadow of a form. And you're gonna have these little pockets of sky holes looking through to the light coming between the branches and the leaves. So draw those and just kind of darken it in as a quick sketch. This is the way I would draw something if I didn't have a lot of time to sit and draw all the details, but I wanted to catch an image of it and get an idea of the way it, um, the way it sits on this hill or the surroundings going beyond it, uh, surroundings beyond it. It could be a hill coming down this way, maybe another one over there. Maybe in here you can see water back in the distance coming across with a horizontal line. And um, back in here are some smaller trees, maybe some sumac or smaller plants along the edge of this field. And these I'm just gonna scribble in to get that idea. Down below here, what I do is I always put my initial on something that I did, and over here I'll put the date, and you're gonna put a different date on yours for sure, but I'm, the, today's date for me is uh, June 17th, 2020, so I'll put that in there. And that, that reminds me that this is, this is the condition of the foliage of this tree at this particular time. Now I could zoom in on this and say this is an oak tree, and what I would do is come down to this drawing here and I could draw a line curving up for the, for the stem of the, of the leaf here, coming up the mid rib. And then I would draw the basic form of the leaf, drawing these, drawing these shapes coming out like this and down like that. This would be a white oak, it has rounded lobes, the red oak has more pointy lobes. And um, depending on the, the season, uh, this could be either bright green or it could be, or it could be weathered in shape. If it is in the fall, you can draw the little details that uh, show the decay or the decline of this leaf. You could shade in different shadows or later add colors to it that show the discoloration as the leaf changes and withers. You could draw little galls forming. You could draw little areas that have been eaten away by small skeletonizers and, and other things just to 
get an idea what it is. Now, um, what I'm going to do is put oak tree here. Oak tree, obviously a tree, and I'm gonna put white. White oak tree, and then I find a reference book and I can find the taxonomic name for it. I could add more details to this, and but at least it gives me an idea of the basic form and, uh, and a, a zoom in on the leaf itself. Now, perhaps I could zoom in even further and um, look around nearby and find the shape of the acorn right here and merge that into the picture as a, another symbol of the season that we're looking at and uh, show some roundness on that acorn by drawing a few little curving lines here, a little shadow underneath, and then draw that beautiful banding on the acorn with crisscross lines like these. You can draw it in very intricate detail by zooming in on it or just suggest it with lines like this. Put a little shadow along, under this ridge here and it'll give you a, a decent idea of what that looks like. And by pairing the two together, it lets you look at the broad picture here and zoom in on it and get a better detail of the, uh, the leaf itself. And um, I would add lettering down below here as well. The next tree I want to draw is one that has a different shape altogether, and I'm going to come up here. Again, if I'm going faster here, which I think I am, um, you might want to uh, just pause the film and, or pause the video and, and um, continue when you're ready. I'm just drawing the tall basic trunk of a, of a conifer tree coming up, and branches are going to, notice I left breaks here too, the branches are going to come out in different directions depending on the nature of the tree, uh, the species of the tree. I'm going to draw them kind of coming out like this and curving over. Branches tend to always want to reach up and catch the light. Now just draw these lines, and they're getting smaller and smaller as they go up, just like the trunk itself. But they're all radiating out from that center trunk, or the main branches are. Oftentimes down below here, the branches are broken off uh, for want of sunlight or for just uh, their usefulness for campfires and whatever else. Um, here I'm going to use a choppy little line that comes down, just, just adding a texture on the shadow side. And um, one thing we're going to have on this is not only the shadow on the side of the tree, but also the shadow from the branches reaching out from it, which sometimes cross over this way and that. And, and again, depending on the location of the, the sunlight in our drawing, so you can draw some little overlapping curvy lines that indicate that the sunlight or the shadow that's created. On these conifers, I'm just going to use short, choppy little lines like this and and uh, indicate the foliage. You know, they're going to fill this area in and just add lines kind of using that basic branch as a starting point and then coming out and reaching in different directions, getting smaller and smaller as they, as they go further away or higher up here in the drawing. I'm going to quickly draw these in and then get a little more into the background here. You could have um, spruce trees. You could have uh, all kinds of conifers here. Michigan is known for its white pine forest in the north here. It gives the whole white pine industry back in the 1800s and have trees like this around, uh, around Gaylord and Grayling that are still the, uh, still large as some of the originals back in the day. So the more I add of this, the more it starts filling out like a like a tree and then I'll add some others in between because they're going out in other directions and uh, keeping the randomness of these lines some larger some longer smaller some of these dark shapes might be bird nests up there squirrels sitting on branches and and um, you use your imagination as you as you add this information to it and down here a few little lines on the center of the trunk suggesting the coarse bark of a uh, of a conifer.
for them. Down around here, I'm going to add a line that shows the edge of this hill, and I add a bunch of lines sticking up here. It'd be like your center line of the tree, but in this case, they're farther away, so I'm just gonna draw lines that reach out, and this will be a combination of the of the leaves, or the needles, and the, and the branches. And we just kind of clump them together more in a shadow shape, a silhouette shape, suggesting the branches of conifers in the distance. It makes it very easy to draw, draw a pine forest and, and dark this in a, darken this in a little bit. And the branches coming towards us, and down below, a lot of chaff down along the bottom of the trunk. And same thing here. And the further away you go, the less you have to worry about it or cons concerned with it. I'm just going to draw these lines going back and forth, suggesting this tree going into the distance and even more on, more so on these, just a few little sketchy lines going back and forth. This is a good technique if you, if you're out walking, you got your sketchbook and uh, you have a main character that you're most interested in. You've already put a lot of time into that and you just want to suggest something of the background and the surrounding trees, but you get, by the time you get back here, it's nothing more than this, just a few lines that, um, that suggest that forest continuing down over the hill in the distance. It's always nice to have a little atmosphere in the drawing. Maybe it's a sunny day or maybe a cloudy day with big billowing cumulus clouds, and uh, with those you can add some shadow lines like this, suggesting the motion of the wind lifting the clouds, and off into the distance uh, and this gives us this foreground area here middle ground going back here's the here's the, the distant distant uh, horizon here maybe an island off there in the distance putting birds in your picture uh, in, in a drawing like this as well you, you could add um, if you see birds flying by you could make notes of what birds those are and what uh, you know what kind of um, uh, what kind of a, uh, the tree, the pine needles themselves, the details. And down in this area, I'm just going to draw some area. I'm going to draw a branch down here uh, to show that this is near the dunes. The pine trees tend to break off here and there. So you might see one here like this, providing a shelter, maybe a moist, more moist um, environment for salamanders and other things. Maybe there's a uh, body of water down in here close by and we could draw that with some marsh sticking up in this area. I'm drawing this about as quickly as I would if I was doing quick sketches uh, sitting on a sitting on a hill looking out into the distance knowing I don't have that much time to put into it but knowing that if I spend a little more time later on I could make it look more believable um, these are uh, some other sketches that I've done in one of my, my field drawing classes with kids I've gone out. And again, I mentioned lettering, how you can mess around with that and make it look more real. One of the students brought in a piece of driftwood here, just a piece of bark actually. And so I was able to draw that and write some details on it. We looked at uh, intricate patterns like Queen Anne's lace and goldenrod. And uh, you know how intricate goldenrod and Queen Anne's lace are. Uh, what we did was break it down into large pillowy forms like that and connected them with the, with the stems coming out to them. The same thing with the goldenrod, those plumes of yellow reaching out. And a uh, little, more, little more smooth detail in here, a little more attention to the detail and the colors. But once again, using words to describe things that the pencil doesn't and having indications of the size. This is one and an eighth times the size of the leaf itself and a dominant color up in here and the location at the school and in the forest and on the date there. So by adding this, it, it, um, it adds more information to the drawing. A similar drawing to the one I just did is uh, this one right here. Um, Notice I had um, the similar trees, similar to this, but different way of drawing the trees back in the distance here in a farm in the field back there. And, and also, uh, just to, to explain it a little better, looking at the, the basic shapes, the most simple shapes of all that go into that, into making a, a drawing like that. 
I hope you have fun going out into the wilderness and uh, take a sketchbook with you or a, or a clipboard with some paper on it and try to catch the uh, catch the scene you see. I'm going to leave this open area here for something else, but for right now, I think I'm going to call it good. I want to thank you for drawing with me and uh, hope you have a great time. Enjoy the wild wilderness and uh, have fun with springtime. Appreciate it. Bye now.